Welcome back to CBS This Morning Saturday. I'm Vanita Nair. And I'm Anthony Mason. A unique work of art commissioned for CBS in the 1960s, but lost to history for nearly 25 years, is back on public display. Michelle Miller is here to tell us about it and how it survived a long journey. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Well, the mural is called Lou's Wall, for short. Nickname for the man who created it half a century ago. Its real name is a whole lot more complicated, and so is the story. It's a mural that spans an impressive 33 feet in length, embossed with 270 words, 65 pallets of food, and a few morsels of wisdom from the likes of Longfellow and Alice B. Toklas. To Nick Fasciano, it's a smorgasbord of literary and culinary delight. They're beautiful. They were beautiful 50 years ago, and they're still beautiful. It's called... It's almost like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Oh, right, right. It's three words. It's gastro, typographic, assemblage. Gastro-typographical assemblage was built by Fasciano and a team of artists back in the 1960s. It took almost two years to complete, and for nearly a quarter of a century, it graced the cafeteria wall at 51 West 52nd Street, network headquarters for CBS, also known as BlackRock. Why would anyone spend that kind of time on a mural that was going up in the office cafeteria? Well. I think it was indicative of what they wanted to do. They wanted to do something unusual, uh, lasting, and uh, significant. They were CBS founder William S. Paley and his lieutenants, men like creative director Lou Dorfsman, who put the shine on the Tiffany network. Lou came to CBS after William Golden, who was the fellow who, who designed the CBSI. And Lou became a really integral part of CBS's Structure. Why was their bar so high? Well, I think they were innovative. And they, I think they knew that, you know, you don't do the same thing that somebody else has done. Paley endorsed the project, but the wall was Dorfman's pride. He wanted every employee to feel inspired when they sat down for a meal at work. He talked about it and its origin in a 1987 radio interview. And I said, oh, what a sketch, you know, you know, 250 different typefaces. It'll take you two days so to draw. So it took, it took an awful lot. It took more than two days to do a very <laughs> rough sketch. And I showed it to him, and he came back and said, you know, go right ahead with it. Lou, Lou was a character. Uh, <laughs> and Fasciano's boss, mentor, and friend for more than 40 years. What was he like to work for? Well, Lou had very high standards, had a temper, had a, a mouth, you know. But the goal always was the striving for excellence. But by 1990, that form of excellence had run its course at Black Rock. Bill Paley retires. Mm -hmm. In comes Larry Tish. Mm -hmm. And out goes the mural. <laughs> right. Lou had called with the news. His wall was being thrown in the dumpster. And I rented a truck that afternoon, and my assistant and I went in and physically took the, all these panels in the truck, brought them to this house, which we had just moved in, and brought them into the basement. And there they sat for 20 years, as Fasciano's career moved him through other networks, magazines, even Columbia Records, where he designed the rock band Chicago's logo and album covers. When Lou died in 2008, finding a home for his wall became Fasciano's obsession. This is a, a, a color print of the wall. That's uh, when fate stepped in. Fasciano's neighbor caught a glimpse of the wall. He was the chairman emeritus of the Culinary Institute of America, and he cooked up an idea for a home. He mentioned that this Culinary Institute is building a new building. It's called the, the Marriott Pavilion. And that this might be a good place for it. You weren't getting your hopes up, though. No, I, no, I was. I, my <laughs> hopes were very, very up, because when you think of it, it's a perfect place for it. Over the course of the five years it took to ready the pavilion, Fasciano single-handedly refurbished every nook and cranny of the mural. So we fill that, sand it, spray it again until it's, you know, till every, it's perfect. Every, the most every, minute every letter. detail. Yeah, every letter. Last month, Fasciano reassembled the mural at the Culinary Institute in Hyde Park, New York, where gastro-typographical assemblage 
was back on display for the first time in 24 years. It's indescribable, and I wish Lou was there to see it with me. What would he say? I don't know. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Well, the five-year restoration cost about $100,000, which was paid for by the Culinary Institute of, Institute of America, the CIA, with a $25,000 donation from the William S. Paley Foundation. And can you imagine what that would cost today? Yeah. I am so glad to see this back up on display. It is so cool. It's just, that's a wonderful story. I know you can't story. help but stare and read everything yeah. on there. I know. There's something about it. You just, when you see it up, and you look at it, it brings a sense of calm and curiosity. Yeah. Because there's so much to look at, and it really was. I would, I'd, I'd like to think it was a source of inspiration yeah. for all those and people. And I I've always loved the idea of art in a workplace as a way of inspiring people, and it's so great to see it back. It really is. Great story, Michelle. Thank Thanks you. for joining us Thanks this morning. For now, for a final look at the weather for your weekend.